Good morning. It is 5.30, January 22nd. Today is a Saturday, I think. Yeah. It's one of those things when you're on vacation that a lot of <laughs> time just kind of melds right into each other. Uh, so yeah, today is the weekend, but for the past few days, it's been feeling like a weekend anyway. Thanks a lot for coming and getting some energy from me in the morning, sharing some thoughts and inspirations. Thank you very much for all the people who've been commenting down in the comment section. I really appreciate that. Uh, sharing your thoughts on things that I have to share. And I really, what I really want to do right now is I want to find a spot kind of near the house, which I am right now, but a place that I can mount up my phone so that I can kind of talk a little bit without having to hold my phone. So don't mind me as I'm a little scatterbrained, which I typically am on these videos. Uh, yeah, today is cold. I don't know if you can see, but I'm in a lot better sweat. I stopped doing the scenic route just for today, maybe tomorrow. And I'm trying to focus in more on uh, just being able to get a better sweat and more on the activity versus the scenery. Maybe we could do it right there. I could do it right here on that wall. No, that wall won't work. Anyway, I thought I'd share a little bit about this uh, new book that I've been uh, going through and it's by author named Bill Perkins. Bill Perkins and uh, the book's title is Die With Zero. Die With Zero. It's a pretty interesting book. And the first thing I thought when I read this title of this book is Die With Zero. Why would you want to die with zero? Doesn't that mean you're not leaving anything back for your children or for, for the people you care about? And it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. And there's a whole, there's a whole chapter on your children and leaving things behind for them. And yeah, just this, this whole thing about uh, inheritances and stuff. And it doesn't really mean that you die, you take everything with you, and then you know you you leave a burden on your children. That was our shop, by the way. But I'm still looking for a spot to mount up this phone. Maybe on the electric extra box over there. Yeah, let's go across the street. And uh, there's a there's a nice nice cafe right here. It's called One More Cafe. Really tasty food. Uh, American food. And uh, man, it's got like spider webs all over it. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, I'm mean, just putting my phone on it, right? All right, let's, let's put that there. Can't really tilt it down because it's tilted up like that. Hmm. But that was probably the best space spot so far. Or maybe I can lean it up against this pole over here. Let's see. Let's go over here. Nope. Not on this telephone wire either. Anyway, uh, Bill Perkins, he goes into the story about how life is the accumulation of memories. He says the total sum of one's life is the amount of memories that they have accumulated over the course of their life because in the end, that's all that you have. And so a lot of the thrust of this book is he is a financial planner, I think. He's a very analytical person, which is kind of cool. And he looks at life as a big math equation, a big, uh, oh, there's, a, there's a dog that's running away. Yep, that dog is running away. And there's the owner. Yep, <laughs> the dog. The dog says, I'm free! I'm free! There's a dog. 
Well, that is not the way that you, that's not the way you want to start your day off with, uh, with your dog running away and you have to chase chasing after it. But anyway, okay. Focus, Justin, focus. So he tells the story in the beginning of the, in the beginning of the book of how, <laughs> sorry, get distracted again. All right, he drops the dog. The dog's running back. What looks like he just towards home. And here comes the owner. Here comes the owner. Did the dog go home? I don't know. I don't know if the dog went home or not. Oh man, there's a spot. I was gonna put. I was gonna put this phone right where this person came out. This person started uh, setting up. Man, I just come at the wrong time. It was available for the past 30 minutes. Only right now, when I walked up to it. It wasn't available. So Jason tells of this story. What was his name? Bill. Bill tells of, tells of the story of his friend named Jason. And Jason and him were working at the same financial firm uh, in their early 20s. And they were both on course to uh, progress in the company at the same rate. It's making, making essentially about the same amount of money. And Jason, one day he comes in, he says, I want to take a trip to Europe. <laughs> and he says, uh, I don't have any good, any credit. This is back in the nineties, by the way. So he says, I don't have any credit. So I decided I'm going to take a loan from the only person that will lend me money without checking my credit or asking me for collateral because they have other ways of making sure you pay back. <laughs> and that's renting or loaning money from a loan shark. So Bill, his friend, says, you're absolutely crazy. Why would you put yourself in that kind of situation with crazy amounts of interest that you have to owe into a trip to a place that you have no idea about because you know there's no Google, there's no internet back then. And then time you wanted to see something of Europe, like you had to buy a book that sat on your coffee table. And the, his friend Jason says, I don't care. I'm just gonna go and I'll figure it out later. And he says, if, if you go, you're gonna, you know, you lose your position in the company. You're gonna be, throw yourself off track to not, um, you know, move on up in your position. And he says, I don't really care. I'm gonna go, go to Europe. So he says, <clears throat> Jason takes the money and he plans his trip to Europe and he goes. And he has a fabulous time. He goes to Germany and he sees the concentration camps at Germany. He goes to Moscow and he, he sees the, uh, he, see, he sees the beautiful architecture there. He goes to Paris. He eats a baguette and cheese with a random other uh, traveling stranger in a park and thinking that life is amazing because they're able to sit here. He goes to Greece. And the book says he makes love to this stranger on a beach for the very first time. And he goes to France and he goes to all these other places. And so when he comes back home, he has all these stories, all these memories that he'll keep with him forever for the rest of his life. And Bill says in the company, he basically gets the same amount of pay as when he left. And nothing really, really changed except that now Jason has all these memories of his early 20s that he has accumulated and is able to carry with him for the rest of his life. And in his 30s, he, Bill starts to think about that and saying that he wished he seized the opportunity to go and make those memories because now he's in his 30s and he says he doesn't feel as, he feels too old to be just slumming it up with some uh, non-directional 20 year olds and he just doesn't feel in the course of life that will allow him to have those kind of experiences and so he just chucks it up to ah it's just too late i guess and so he goes on and on about how we have uh this math equation of our lifespan left how much we have and he calls it the life force and he says every time you put in x amount of hours like your um employer pays you back in maybe what you want to call life force or some kind of currency and every time you use that currency, you're exchanging your life force for something. 
So you exchange your life force for a coffee, or you exchange your life force for, and it's not only money, monetary things. He also equates life force to a lot of other things, which includes time. Um, and he says, if, if you try to live your life to the fullest, you want to essentially die at the end of your life with a balance sheet of zero. So you don't want to leave anything else on the table that you say, oh, I wish I did this, or I wish I did that. I wish I didn't have so much money in the bank now. <laughs> that essentially, you're gonna to leave to your children anyway. Um, if you have children or, or, or charity or, or, or whatever. <clears throat> but he, he says, making the best use of your time. Mm. Making the best use of your time and trying to equate your life with making a massing of memories. And so I thought about that of my own life and how when I was in my 20s, yeah, I'm really happy that, you know, eventually I ended up here in Vietnam. But in my early 20s, I came, I took a trip to this unknown place called Vietnam, just kind of on a whim with another older couple in my congregation. And they said, hey, let's go. And I was like, oh, I really don't know. But they, they kind of gave me a little bit of assurances, like, don't worry, we'll be there, be there. And that was enough for me. So I took this, took this awesome trip and here I am uh, all these years later. <clears throat> but I have so many good memories of that time in my life that I was crazy enough to go and do some, some exciting things that probably at this point in my life I wouldn't do again just because I'm older and more stable and yeah, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, I'm sure I'll talk about this book a little bit more another time. But it's a very interesting concept of um, dying with zero and making every moment count and not necessarily dying uh, living like tomorrow is tomorrow is, you're gonna die tomorrow that's kind of not, not, not the thrust he's tossing at this book he's, he's like you, know, you can estimate um, or things may happen and you may not live out this lifespan that you thought you would you would um, but it's all about at the end of the times end of days like what do you want to have share to tell with friends and I guess maybe this touches a nerve because it talks about uh, storytelling as well it touches on that you know facet of being able to share what you have with others by means of stories which is something I'm really really interested in at the moment anyway this video is getting long thank you very much for checking up on me I will make another video for you guys tomorrow thank you very much and we will see you guys on another edition of 5 a.m. workouts the lat edition and it is 52 degrees at the moment, so I better go get in and get some clean, warm clothes on. Aloha, take care.